Welcome makers. Today I am sharing some experience that I've had with open barrel connectors. Now, if you've ever used some connectors like these, which have these red, blue, yellow, I think is the other color, they're a hard plastic and a barrel connector that you crimp down and then at some point you can then use this to attach to a screw terminal. I've been using these for years. I've never really liked them and they've been really a point of frustration in a lot of wiring that I do here in the shop. And if you've ever used these before, you know what I'm talking about. They're, they're very difficult to use. A lot of times they come with a really bad crimper like this. Uh, they're often blister packed at stores, uh, like big box stores. If you go online, you can get a slightly different variation of these uh, where they've got the uh, shrink wrap connector on the end of these, but on the inside it's that same barrel connector. And you might use something like this that is a ratcheting connector and allows you to get enough pressure on these sort of connectors in order to really uh, crimp down on the barrel jack connector. But even with those, I find that unless you're using a larger gauge wire, it's really a hit and miss situation. Sometimes you can get a really good crimp on there and you get lucky with it. Uh, other times you find that you crimp them on there and they fall off. I've hated this whole thing for years in the way that these connectors work. And I recently started using these open barrel connectors when I was trying to solve a problem in attaching uh, a ring terminal to these banana jacks. And I found that most of the common sizes are simply not small enough to work on uh, things like a banana jack post. So today what I'm gonna be showing you is a way that you can use open barrel connectors for your smaller gauge wire. It's really handy for Maker Electronics. And then I'm also gonna be covering uh, some of the ways that I've been using shrink wrap to save myself time in creating enclosures for electronics where the electronics may be enclosed in something already or uh, more or less just hidden. And the problem is you just want to make sure that the electronics themselves aren't shorting out. So with all that said, let's get to work. So let's take a little close up here of what I'm talking about. So here we've got a banana jack and I'm using these in an upcoming project here. And if I take probably the smallest one out of this uh, package, you can see here I can probably make this work, right? Uh, it doesn't fit very well. Uh, I would put the other nut on here and it's gonna give me kind of a okay connection, right? But the bigger problem is that this is for 10 to 12 gauge wire. Uh, you know, they do have smaller ones here, so I could go down this route. But again, the, they make these rings a little bit more universally sized, which makes it a little more difficult to be able to find one that's gonna work for your, your smaller electronics projects. So that was really the trouble I ran into. Now, these are open barrel connectors, and you can see here really the primary difference is twofold. So let's cut one of these open and I'll show you the details here. All right, so you can see I've cut this one open here and the difference between these connectors is really pretty clear. Now, here we have a closed barrel jack. So the idea is that the wire goes in there and then, you know, this sort of crimper here or uh, maybe this one where it's got a little bit more ability to crimp down on this has to crush and I mean completely crush this very thick and heavy gauged barrel that's on here. Now if I would try to do this with needle nose pliers it's kind of tough. It's not very easy. These aren't really made for needle nose pliers. Neither really are these but if I'm a maker and I'm this is all I've got on hand is a pair of needle nose pliers these become very difficult to use. So that's why they started packaging these with these sort of connectors. Now, this is a blue, so if I've got this, it's still a lot of work to get this crushed. And as you can see, 
even if I'm crushing that, if I've got a thin 22 or, you know, a, a higher AUG wire, it's unlikely that it's going to work very well there. And I've done that numerous times before. So I've got my crimpers here. And uh, these are great crimpers, by the way. If you don't own a pair of these, I'll have a link in the description. They're probably my favorite pair of crimpers. I saw a lot of other uh, electronics YouTubers have some of these, and they really are great. So um, we're just going to strip off a couple of millimeters here of wire. And as you can see, I can literally just slide this wire in and out of that hole. So that was with some reasonable amount of crimping. So everything is really being held on by this heat shrink. And then you're getting kind of a intermittent connection or a very poor connection here. Now, yeah, that can all be solved with solder, but there's a whole nother reason you don't want to use that. Um, these open barrel connectors are really easy to use. The only drawback to them really is that they don't have an insulator. So you've got to go back after the fact and add an insulator. I've got these clear ones that I picked up and this is a brand that I really like. Um, the reason why I like this brand, I'll have a link in the description, is largely because along with the heat shrink tubing, there is uh, an adhesive that's lined on the inside of these. So it makes them watertight as well. And you can get these in multiple colors just like you can anything else. But what we're gonna do here today is I'm just gonna show you how easy it is to make your own connector. It only takes a moment and uh, we're gonna we're going to grab kind of a small gauge of this tubing here. You can cut this stuff in half with a razor blade, uh, you know, crimpers, whatever you got on hand. They, they cut really easily. So it's really just a matter of sliding your heat shrink tubing on first. And you don't need a heat gun. You can use a heat gun, of course. Lots of people use lighters. Now, ultimately, you should use a connector or a crimper like this. Uh, these are engineering grade, and uh, one of the uh, people in our Discord had l shown me that these are actually much easier to use uh, than these sort of crimpers here. I wasn't sure who it was in the Discord. If I find your name, I'll, I'll put it on the video here. But um, someone had recommended these uh, crimpers. They are pretty expensive, but in my opinion, very worth it. And you'll see why in a second. So... If you're gonna crimp these, all you've gotta really do is, uh, I like to flatten it out here so I get a good U channel uh, for it. And then you just put your wire in there. You have to crimp the wire and crimp the insulation to make a good connection. But let me show you how quickly and easily this works. You put it in the, the hole there, give it a little squeeze, and look at that connection. It pushes down from the inside connects those, and this is a really solid connection all by itself. And then uh, all you've got to do for the top insulation, same thing. You get a very similar connection, but that is solid. That is not coming apart at, at all. It's holding on and giving you a good firm connection. Then all we have to do, take our heat gun, hit this with a little heat. I like just using gravity to hold that in place over that connector. All right, so here we have now a frustration-free connection, and that is, that's strong. I literally am having difficulty pulling that out. Now, a slightly less stronger connection, but one that's still relatively frustration-free. So let's put our heat shrink on. Then we're gonna grab one of these connectors as well got my you know, those pliers and I like to do the tab fold on these so uh, you get the wire in there fold over that first tab and then come across crimp it down with the second tab now this is a strong but if I pull hard enough this will come apart um, but it is making a good solid connection and then you can crimp this side as well Still a very, very strong connection compared to some of these other connectors. And then we just hit this with the heat gun as well. 
All right, so these are really solid, really like these connections. And to me, this is far superior than one of these. Uh, it works for smaller electronics really, really well. You can put the right on that stud here, and then uh, we can put our nut on there. And as you can see, this looks like that connection belongs there. This is a good solid connection, getting me no problem to this banana jack. So that is how these work. These open barrels are now my new go-to for a lot of things. But I also wanna show you these, uh, these butt connectors. So butt connectors are another thing that I think a lot of people struggle with on here. And uh, I'll kinda show you the same type of thing. So these are basically open barrel butt connectors and these are far superior in my opinion to these as well. So same thing, I've got like 22 gauge wire here and it's got a very similar, not sure if you can really see that hole, but a very similar hole to the other one. Uh, it's actually a little bit smaller. So in theory, you're gonna put two pieces of wire in here, crimp down and hope it holds together. These work so much better and I'm gonna show you why. So we can crimp down. So I'm gonna trim off about five millimeters on this wire right here. And I'm gonna show you, look, we can put multiple wires inside this connector and crimp this down. So along with just being a butt connector, you can actually use this to splice your wires together as well. So we had one Simple connection, simple crimp there. The insulation on this one's a little bit hard because uh, I just can't open that crimper enough, but we're not gonna really care too much about that insulation because we're also gonna put one of these connectors on here. So on these, I like to, you can actually get a little bit of a bigger one on here as well. So, so here we've got this connection. So with this, you can see we've now got the ability, so I crimp that one side with the crimpers. Uh, we can use those crimpers or we can use our needle and those pliers the same way for these butt connectors. And then we'll grab that insulation to make sure that it holds it in place. And then once again, hit it with the heat gun and we're golden. So these work great as well. You can see I created uh, another one of these. Here's one of the ones that I just did uh, with pliers. Uh, you can use the crimper as well, but these are also waterproof connections, which make this even more awesome. And uh, I really like these because it's, able to get a good solid uh, connection. And I didn't have to break out a soldering iron, twist these together and, uh, you know, solder them in maybe an enclosure or something else. So these work really well for tight spaces. So I wanna show one more thing here along the lines of shrink wrap, and that's these bad boys here. So these are large shrink wrap tubing. Um, and you may have seen a lot of this kind of stuff used for batteries. If you ever owned a LiPo battery, a lot of the LiPos come uh, shrink wrapped in that. But what I've been using this for is enclosing a lot of uh, things like buck converters. So I was able to just simply take a, a tube of it, this one's just not shrink wrapped, take that tubing, slide in a buck converter, and then with the heat gun, have it shrink it. Now. This isn't waterproof, obviously, because this is wide open. I could theoretically zip tie this or something, but I use this so that way you can use this inside of some sort of project without having to build an enclosure for it. So this, while you know showing off the electronics to a particular project, really does prevent it from incidental contact. No wire is going to be able to, you know, touch in here and short anything out which is usually my primary concern when using this in some sort of other display. But uh, just wanted to also share that tip because this was really um, 
something that I've been using a lot lately and it's worked out really well and it saves a ton of time. I can throw something in there, uh, shrink wrap it. And a lot of these shrink wraps are very forgiving. Um, most of the ones I showed you today are either three to one or four to one. So uh, even, even a, a tube that's fairly large like this is going to shrink considerably uh, once it gets hit with a heat gun. And you know, as an example here, this is the same shrink wrap that I used here, and you can see how much smaller this gets at the end. So these are great for just simply shrink wrapping some electronics and using them in your project. So as you can see, these open barrel connectors are really easy to use. You've got multiple options. You can use uh, one of these precision crimpers, or honestly, the needle nose pliers work really well for a very simple connection. And the heat shrink really does hold the wire on there so much better than some of the hard connectors without the heat shrink. And really, I love the way that it's easy enough with heat shrink to simply enclose. Uh, this is just a buck converter here, and I never have to worry about that shorting out. The other thing that I really, really liked out of all this was these butt connectors versus the traditional butt connectors. Uh, they work really, really well. You can take two different wires and connect them down to one. So uh, splicing wires together is a lot easier. And to me, this is a much more secure connection than uh, trying to get some solder in there and hopefully twisting them in a way. And I know a lot of people have great videos on how to join wire that way. And I've been doing that for years as well. I'll probably still continue to do that in some cases, but uh, for very quick connections that I want more or less permanent, uh, I may go this route in the future because I just found it very convenient and easy to do. So with that is gonna be the end of today's video. If you liked it, make sure you mash that like button and don't forget to share and subscribe so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. We've got a lot of things on the plate coming up here really soon. I've been talking with the team at Thangs and I'm sure you've seen some of the posts that I've put in the Discord uh, looking for information. We're gonna be start doing some videos here with Thangs and uh, really kind of highlighting all the really cool features there uh, I've been working with uh, Dennis and John over there, really a bunch of great guys over at Thangs and uh, really improving that site overall. I also have a number of different projects in the works. Uh, we're gonna be talking about the K40 laser upgrade here in the shop very soon. And I've got a lot of other projects uh, like the Power uh, Monster Maker Power coming out. And uh, there are also some droids that are gonna be coming out here very soon as well. So. I've been quiet for the last three months. It's been kind of busy, but uh, we're gonna have a whole new set of videos coming up here and most of that content is just getting staged now and ready for release. So hope you enjoy the videos upcoming. And like I said, uh, don't forget to subscribe if you're not a subscriber so you don't miss any of those upcoming videos. So with that, I wanna say thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.